for those of you just turning in, I will be going live uh, on camera in just like a minute or two. Just waiting for this to pop up so I can see the screen, see what's going on. And thanks to everybody that's tuned in so far. We got some really cool stuff to talk about. Um, I don't know how many of you guys saw the post this morning that I did on the top 10 uh, new products of Macna, but we're gonna have a cool little discussion of you know what I think is going to be some of the best products um, at Macna, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a few oddballs, a few uh, wild cards, but uh, for now I already know that there's gonna be a few pretty cool devices. So, um, well, I can't see myself yet. Makes it kind of hard to frame. Come on, YouTube. What's up, guys? Jake Adams here, and uh, man, uh, less than 24 hours before I have to fly off to the airport to go to New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana. I think this is going to be a really interesting uh, location for Macna this year. And uh, yeah, give me one second, man. I'm just trying to get myself to show up here so I can see what's going on. It's shown for you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why isn't it a show for me? This happens every time. Just takes a little bit to like to to get her started. But um, but yeah, definitely uh, participate in the comments. This is definitely like a, a Q and A discussion segment here where we can talk about all the stuff we're gonna see at Macna. Um, yeah, so. Let me know in the comments if you are going to Macna. I think I already saw from some of you guys that you are already there. Um, what you're looking forward to? Okay, there we go. There we go, now I can see myself and, and frame it accordingly. Okay, now I can do this. I want you guys to get a good view of everything, you know? So you can see that reef tank up in the background, and now I can see the chat. All right, we're almost ready to go. Okay, hi from Dubai, Australia. Rico's getting his bag packs. Uh, let's see, who else we got? Van Nuys up in the house. What's up, Fishy Snowman? Do, 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 do. All right. So, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, this morning I shared a story about uh, kind of the top 10 new products that I expect to see at Macna. Um, like I said, there'll probably be some wild cards, there'll be some things that I don't know are th that are going to be there, but there's already like 10 really good uh, products uh, that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Some of them I actually already have, um, and so, but there's always like new details um, to dive in, to, to check out. Uh, please, this is definitely like an engaging uh, live stream. So uh, let me see if I can get my sound up on here. Do, 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 do. There, can everybody hear me okay? I hope you can. There, can everybody hear me? Oh uh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so um, where to start? First, uh, it's really important. I don't really mention this very much, but um, I def I have two companies that are really big sponsors of the YouTube channel, and without them, the traveling, the equipment, and the amount, the sheer amount of time that I spend uh, dedicating to this channel would just not be impossible. So really, before I get started, I have to give thanks to Worldwide Corals and Ecotech Marine. They are two committed sponsors to the Reef Builders video YouTube channel. Um, you guys know Ecotech Marine. They make a bunch of really cool gear. Uh, Worldwide Corals is definitely going to, you know, they're one of the best, uh, fastest growing coral farms. Uh, here in the United States. Uh, they're both gonna have booths at Magna, so definitely put those high on your list to check out when you are in New Orleans. Um, so, also, I will also have a booth at Magna. The Reef Builders booth is really just kind of a place to set up shop and camp. We don't show off too much, um, but we will have a few things that you can't get anywhere else. So first up, is the uh, Blue Tang comic book. 
Now we just we launched this for the first time at uh, Machina last year. Can't believe it's only been a year since we released the Blue Tanks comic book. Um, but even if you think you know everything about Blue Tanks, this is a really fun book for you to polish up your knowledge about this animal, um, to share with your kids, to grab a few for your fish store, to educate your customers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, Let's see, what do I need to do to get a better view of that tank in the back? Okay, so we're gonna have a limited amount of these at the Reef Builders booth at Macna. Uh, I don't know what number it is, but uh, if you're walking the show, you'll definitely see it. Um, I don't often spend that much time in the booth. I will do my best to spend some time there. I guess it depends how many people are coming to the booth and saying hi, uh, but I us I'm usually walking around, but I will definitely have some representatives, um, some fellow reefers in the, uh, the booth basically answering questions, uh, giving out the comic books. Um, I know a lot of you are looking for that coral poster. You know, uh, it's just not even worth the time to pack them up for whatever kind of money, you know, we're just not set up for that. Uh, but we are set up to bring them to shows like this and to give them to you. So even if you're not going, um, you could have someone you know, surely you know somebody that knows somebody that's going to MACBA, um, have them stop by the Reef Builders booth and pick up one of the coral posters either at the Reef Builders booth or at the Polyp Lab booth. Um, what else, what else? Uh, one second, I gotta grab one more product that I will have there. Okay. All right. So the other thing, and one of the very few things that uh, Refilter sells at all, is this RAS book, the Labrity Fishes RAS book. This was a collaboration with Rudy Kiter, and he is the man when it comes to RASs. Um, he did a lot of identification books. So this is the newest most complete and up-to-date guide to uh, RASs, uh, published for the first time about two years ago, so it's up-to-date as of then. Um, this is a really limited edition book. We only printed 200, and I think I'm down to just a couple dozen. Um, may or may not be signed by Rudy Kiter himself, so uh, um, we only sell these at the shows pretty much. They're uh, $99 for the show special, um, but if you love RASs or reef fish, Definitely come by the Reef Builders booth. I'm not gonna be bringing cases and cases of these. It's probably gonna bring six, maybe 12, depending on how much room I have. So, uh, okay, I think that's enough information about MACNA. Someone asked what MACNA is, and um, it's the Marine Aquarium Conference of North America. This is like the big uh, national reef aquarium show uh, for the United States. And definitely over the last uh, four or five years has become more and more international. Um, so this is a place to meet all the people, uh, see all the new gear, which we're gonna talk about. Uh, it's also a place to see lots of great corals, uh, lots of great speakers. I'm super looking forward to, to meeting uh, Gerald Hesslinger, who's basically the godfather of coral farm, uh, clam farming. Um, so there's not too many people that specialize in clams like that. And um, who else? Uh, so yeah, speakers, there'll be a raffle and all kinds of great stuff. So if you're in the New Orleans area or one state over, uh, definitely start making plans to head over to New Orleans for the Marine Aquarium Conference of North America. Um, so thank you to everybody that's in the chat. Um, I'm just gonna start talking about some of these products one by one. I put together a, uh, uh, let's see, a collection post, a top 10 post this morning, and I didn't dive into why, I each product is going to be kind of stand out at this Machna. Um, so I kind of had in mind that I was going to make this video where we could discuss some of these uh, products in a little bit more detail and um, and uh, answer some of the questions uh, with just a little bit more specifics. So let's see, which product should we start with? Uh, hey, I'm filming here, says did everyone see the cringe video this doofus did for Illu Magic? You know, that's just really not fair because I did one video for Illu Magic and the script was mine. I just had a lot to say and it came out a little bit choppy when I was reading from a paper. 
Um, but one sponsored video for like 12 tour videos of Australia, I think that's a worthy trade-off. Uh, you're right, Henry Johnson, I shouldn't feed the trolls, but you know, I just want to mention that uh, you know, 4K mirrorless cameras and lenses and gear doesn't grow on trees. You know, it takes a lot of effort. It's not like when I do these Facebook Lives, yeah, I put up my phone up here on a tripod and we just gab it out. Um, but for some of these things, you know, there's just a lot of effort, a lot of energy, sometimes good amount of money that goes into the travel and the time. So. Yeah, you know, it kind of hurts my feelings when, you know, people really react strongly, not really understanding some of the economics of what has to happen to be able to make great videos. So, um, let's start. What should we start with first? Um, let's start with an obvious one. So, the uh, Vectra S1. Uh, we have four controllable pumps that are kind of making a debut at this Mac event. We're going to start with the Vectra S1. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, so I have that, that, the, the post that has the links to all these stories. If you're watching this later, all the links are going to be up in the description below. So the Vectra is a pump uh, by Ecotech Marine that's been uh, uh, available on the market for two years. And when they launched, they launched the Vectra M1 and the L1. Uh, and it was pretty obvious that that was for medium and that was for large and that a small one would be in the works for later, an S1. I started writing about the S1 probably like right when the others came out. Um, so these are some really cool pumps. Um, the body themselves is not, uh, it's not out of the ordinary. What makes the Vectra pumps really, really cool is the quiet drive controller. Um, and the thing that's really interesting, it's actually a lot harder to scale down to make things smaller than to scale up because then your tolerances get, get much smaller, your bearing surfaces get much smaller. So that's why it took so long for the Vectra S1 um, to come to market. Not to mention they were ironing, ironing out some kinks um, regarding the Vectra pumps. Uh, let's see what else. So. I, the Vectra M1 and L1 are rated for 2,000 and 3,000 gallons per hour respectively. So you're talking about a pretty big tank to use those pumps on. So the S1, I think it maxes out at 1,500 gallons per hour. So what I've been doing is you can recalibrate the pumps, like give it a new minimum and maximum. So I have an M1 on the tank that you see right behind me, and I've got it calibrated for a maximum of like 15% uh, output. So when I crank it all the way, it only goes to 15% because otherwise it would overflow the tank very quickly. Uh, let's see. So the Vectra S1 is going to be substantially smaller, just the overall dimension of the pump itself. Um, and I think they shaved like a half inch off the width and one inch off the length and uh, quite a bit off the price. If I remember correctly, the M1 is $350. And my fear was when they came out with the S1 because most of the gear goes into the power supply and the controller that, you know, maybe it'd be like a little bit less, like 325 or 299. Um, but they've actually been able to shave it down to, I think, 275. Um, but the biggest uh, reduction is definitely going to be in size. So it's going to be small enough to put into uh, all in one tanks. You know, these chambers are usually pretty skinny. Um, so yeah, I mean, controllable pumps are awesome. Uh, to be honest, there's so many good ones coming out on the market right now. And uh, uh, we're gonna talk about a few more. The Vectra S1 is gonna be a very popular one, especially for the people who are all in, in the uh, uh, Ecotech Marine uh, Aquarium ecosystems. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna take a little drink and a catch my breath in between each of the product and uh, take a moment to check out the links. Thanks to everybody who's tuning in. Um, definitely if you're not subscribed, do it already. I am going to basically put my comfort and my sleep schedule on hold this weekend to just crank out as much as I can while I'm there. So uh, hit that notification button too so you get notifications of all the videos as they come out. And this is a good time to address everyone who's been patiently waiting for the Sanjay Yoshi full tank video. Um, I really didn't want to do it in the middle of the summertime because I knew it would just kind of get lost in the uh, shuffle because right after MacNet, people are going back to school, people are back in their tanks, and uh, more people will be able to enjoy them. So I promise you, 
Uh, shortly after your Machna is kind of uh, fading away, I'm going to be cranking. We got the Sanjay Yoshi full tank video. We got the uh, Jason Fox uh, signature corals facility tour video. Um, and then I'm still going to do a highlight reel of the coolest fish I saw in Australia and the coolest corals I saw in Australia. So, um, I am, uh, you know, Ty asked me how I'm going to sleep at Magna Vegas. I've been to Vegas plenty of times. I'm going to sleep uh, like a baby rock. <laughs> I'm going to sleep just fine. Uh, I could party anytime. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked, why is people going to fluorescent lighting from LED? And that really has to do with f the, the light feel and like filling in uh, the corals of your inside your aquarium. So the LED lights, they can produce like a two-dimensional light field that's like, you know, still pretty bright, but when you have a three-dimensional shape, it's really hard for that light to come in at all angles from a single point source. It just doesn't work that way. Physics doesn't work that way. You get a little bit of light bouncing off the back, but this would be a great segue into the max specs recurve LED um, because we've seen a little bit of this light uh, at a few of the shows this year, and I think this light is really going to address some of the issues that people are having um, not so much from the color or the intensity of LEDs. There's no shortcomings there. Um, it's really the light field. It's and so uh, the recurve is is, like, is more like a next generation, not a second razor, but a, 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 an offshoot of the razor. And I keep saying that because they Max Spec tells me they have a second version of the razor that's going to come out. Um, if you're not familiar with the razor, it's a really cool fixture where it's really thin and it's uh, kind of perforated. So the fixture itself is all aluminum and uh, heat can passively rise through the heat sinks and uh, turning the whole fixture into a heat sink. So the recurve takes this another step. I'm really excited about it because the uh, original color of the, the, the razor was so good. It was just so well balanced. Great blues, great UV. Um, one thing that really made it pop was the use of warm UV LEDs. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> not warm UV, warm white LEDs, um, because that really helps to balance out some of the frosty blue that we have uh, on these lights. So a next generation razor light would be very exciting. You're talking about new LEDs, new optics. Um, when I was using the razor, they were using uh, lenses. Now they switched over to kind of a sophisticated, uh, um, individual reflector for each LED and there's some kind of nano coating crystal mumbo jumbo for better dispersion so the cluster of lights down the middle of the recurve on its own is gonna be pretty awesome but to, to take it to the next level the recurve has these wings on the side right and these wings can angle in to increase uh, the brightness to the tank but the the end of the wing basically has a LED strip light on both sides. So this is basically like recreating a T5 with LEDs. So those are going to be unlensed. They just have like a lens cover, no optics. I want to say there's like four colors in the accessory strips, the LED strips that in the wings of the recurve. Um, so that's going to be a really exciting light. I did an unboxing earlier this summer. I have one here. I haven't installed it anywhere yet. Uh, one of the local fish stores promised me I would be able to do that after Magna. They want to get a couple things um, in order. So um, Goss U Bunny says he's thinking of the Fluval Evo 13.5. The light that it comes with uh, is very good. And the pump you should use, just off the top of my head, is the Akamai KPS water pump. Uh, A-Q-A-M-A-I. Search it on Reef Builders. It's 100 bucks, a controllable, tiny little nano pump. Um, if you want to take it down a notch, maybe uh, the smallest Gen 3 Coralia is also a really good and affordable choice. Um, so yeah, good luck with your Evo. It's a great way to cut your teeth on that. Uh, back to the recurve. I'm really excited about this light. Um, it, the fixture comes in two, three, and four foot lengths. What this means is that you basically get two fixtures or three fixtures in one, so the price is up there. Um, there's a lot of material, a lot of LEDs. I think the four foot version is like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, you're really getting into similar territory as some high performance light. But when you add up, you're getting two Radeon Pros, boom, you're at like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars already. Um, both of those lights are going to be great. I'm super stoked about the recurve 
it will have an onboard controller. This one thing that they've done, there's always an onboard controller so you can access all the features um, right there and do some programming on the fly. And then like Ecotech Marine, they sell uh, an accessory kind of a hub. Um, what is it called? The IPv6, which basically connects to your light, collects to your network, and then you can make it dance on your smartphone uh, however you need. Uh, so recurve LED, like I said, we've seen some of this light uh, this summer before, uh, but it's going to make a bigger splash at Magna. We saw a lot more uh, prop. You want me to down the water? I'm not that thirsty. Thank you again to everybody that's watching now. Um, I just got so much cool stuff to talk about. I'm only down two products. Almost have 100 people watching at the same time. So going for my little bitty live stream record. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Um, yeah, and feel free to ask any questions um, uh, regarding these products or Macna. Say a little bit on topic. Um, so okay, so we talked about the Vectro, talked about the Recurve. Let's go back to another pump. Um, the CJ pump, the PSK and the SDC. So CJ, if, you, if you've been reefing for a minute, you know that the CJ PSK pumps are just some of the best kind of workhorse needle wheel protein skimmer pumps. Uh, CJ doesn't make their own skimmers, but they make you know, one of the most beloved uh, protein skimmer pumps uh, for the aquarium hobby. Um, so, and they make great pumps also for the return. They're super efficient, they're super reliable. They got some crazy long warranty. Um, so for years I've been just waiting, waiting for CJ to put together a controllable pump. They did this two years ago with a controllable uh, flow pump for inside the tank called the E-Stream. And they've been working on this uh, controllable uh, return pump for a really long time. What's really cool about these, is um well it's CJ. Let's just I mean they're they're gonna be so reliable, they're gonna be so quiet. Now we recently learned that they're also gonna have some cloud connection features, and that's the one thing that I really need to learn a lot more about uh with CJ uh, when I visit their booth there. Um so I think there's gonna be three models of the uh SDC, what they call the smart DC pump. And uh, these are gonna be fully controllable. They got a cool little uh, little app uh, for your phone. Um, don't know that much about them, but they are also releasing a controllable PSK version. Uh, so high performance, next generation, DC controllable uh, needle wheel PSK is gonna be very exciting. I cannot wait to see one of these on a protein skimmer um, because when you have a controllable DC needle wheel pump, that opens the door to some crazy uh, uh, dynamic protein skimming with the pump. So say your skim, you your skimmer, you just added uh, a bunch of mysis shrimp to your tank, and your protein skimmer collapsed. If we had just like a low and high level sensor in our protein skimmer, when that foam collapses, that pump could ramp up and start uh, you know going to overdrive to kind of make up for the collapsed foam from adding the frozen food. And um, likewise, when that, when the, say you did something that made your skimmer kind of go crazy, you had a high water level uh, thing, you might have the pump uh, decrease. So, but those are the, 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 the packages that other companies are going to have to make for the CJ PSK uh, needle wheel controllable pump. Whew, man, that, that, uh, that product is sure a handful. All right, so the randomized assassin says, I already have two old radions, going to buy two more for a new tank. Do I go with the pros? Ah, yeah, I mean, SPS dominated Red Sea tank. The pros are so good. I wouldn't even change out the old radions. They're going to be plenty good. But the newest pros have one of the best color combinations. I already talked about the warm white that's in the recurve LED. Um, so the uh, Radeon Gen 4 Pro um, is going to have that color plus a new color, which is, uh, uh, I want to say it's an exclusive to the Radeon Gen 4. It's a 430 nanometer LED added to the mix. Uh, long story short, your Gen 4 Pros have like the best color rendition of just about any lights. And uh, for SPS, you won't be disappointed. All right, what else we got? Uh, okay, so we got those two things out. Let's talk about one more pump. We got two more pumps to talk about. Let's go dive into one pump before we go uh, to a totally different topic. 
Rossmont. So Rossmont is a new company. There's there's like a Silicon Valley of water pumps in Italy, and I don't know why. But there's one particular area where their Hydor, Cice, and Eden all make pumps. They make their own motors. Rossmont, um, I believe, so the, it was formed by previous employees of Cice and Hydor, and they came together. And at first, they just started making a really neat, uh, low-profile, um, and pretty high capacity water pump. But over time, their pumps, the Rossmont Mover, um, has been uh, just a really, really great choice. Uh, their AC pumps, and this is a really interesting thing. Rossmont makes AC products. They really took, blew everybody away when about a year and a half ago, I think, they released the Waver. And the Waver is this neat little control box that you can plug your mover into, and it turns your AC pump into a controllable pump. So no one else has done this. It's still kind of a mystery how they do this. And now they're doing it again with their own version of a return pump, the riser. So we got the Rossmont mover uh, propeller pump, the waver, which is a controller, and the riser. So what's neat about the riser is I want to say it's like $99. It's going to be uh, non-controllable out of the box. You just plug it in straight into a power receptacle, and it's going to go. Um, but what's neat about that is for $200, you can plug it into a waver, and the waver, basically $300 total, turns the riser into a controllable pump. Now, with the waver, you can plug in one mover for water flow and one riser for return flow. Alternatively, you could have two risers into your waver and control them separately. So, $99, you get a really high performance water pump. Another $200 to add the waver, and then you can control it. Um, and if you wanted another riser, now you're looking at $400 for two controllable return pumps. They're quiet, they're efficient, they're effective. Um, they're made like in the heartland, the Silicon Valley of where these water pumps come from. Uh, so the Rossmont riser is gonna be really neat because it grows the Rossmont ecosystem. And you know they've gotta have a needle wheel version in the works. They've got to. We might even see one at this show. It might be a little early, but you know that at Rossmont headquarters, they have um, a needle wheel version of this riser. So Rossmont is a really a company to watch. Uh, they're building out their ecosystem in a really uh, creative and original path. They're really like doing their own path when it comes to these water pumps. Um, whew, all right, catch my breath, check the comments. Do, 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 do. A small pump to go in a fuge or tumble keto. Mm, I don't know, a small maxi jet. I think that'd be all right. Oh, man, so the Pacific Sun, we're going to get to them here in a second. Uh, their pump, their lighting models are always changing, so I don't really know what's current, what's available. Um, I'm not sure. I personally don't have any knowledge or experience or feedback about Pacific Sun's lighting products. I've always appreciated the brand. It's uh, been kind of dominant in the Eastern Europe because I want to say they come from Poland. It's only in the latest... Uh, few years where they really kind of been making a push into the general aquarium market. Um, Sean Spiteri asked when I'm coming back to Australia. Uh, Anthony of Dalua Aquariums is going to be at the Reef Builders booth. He's coming, he's already in LA. Uh, so he was my host uh, when I came out to Australia the first time and we're going to talk about it. We're definitely going to talk about it. Definitely want to do a West Coast tour addition, in addition to checking out a few Sydney places I didn't get to see last time. So, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this live stream, this just general discussion of some of the products that I'm really looking forward to seeing at Macna. Uh, I'm really hoping I can hit a peak of 100 live uh, people watching at the same time, watching that number go up and down. So if you could give me just a little bit of help, give that thumbs up, maybe share it with some reefer friends who might like this. Um, all right, so we've talked about three pumps and a light. Let's talk about something different. We were just talking about Pacific Sun. So let's talk about Pacific Sun. Uh, they are well known for really creative products. And one thing that they're going to be demoing for the first time at Magna is uh, their version of an alkalinity monitor and controller. And it's called the KH Lab. They have a really interesting idea because um, some of these alkalinity monitors and controllers 
Um, some of them are all in one. So they'll have three peristaltic pumps uh, inside the device to bring in a water sample, bring in some reagent, and uh, expel the waste. And maybe, I guess, another fourth channel for, for dosing uh, buffer. So what Pacific Sun is doing that's really, really interesting is they are pairing up their module. It's if, you, if you look at the posts, I'm going to put all the links down below. You'll be able to check these out yourself. Um, the Cage Lab is a standalone little jobby, and it's going to connect to one of two of their dosing uh, pump systems. So the Core 5th has five channels of dosing. The Core 7th has seven channels of dosing. And so what's really cool is Pacific Sun has no dosing pumps inside the KH lab itself, but it's gonna work in tandem with the Core 5th or the Core 7th to uh, basically uh, enlist some of those dosing pumps in the Core 7th, which still gives you, uh, so it's gonna use three channels on the Core 7th, and then you still have four channels left over for your balling salts, for you know, calcium, magnesium, trace elements, what have you. So, yeah, so the KH Lab is really cool because you won't be investing in just an alkalinity controller monitor. You will also be investing basically in your path forward uh, with the KH Lab, with the Core 7th. Um, uh, the initial pricing that we got was, I think, uh, 700, no, it was 795 euros. I mean, and that turns out to be 939 US dollars. So looking at the KH lab with like some pretty high quality um, uh, dosing pump lineup and system, somewhere between, I'm guessing 900 to $1,000. Um, the Core 7th is cool because some of the other accessories that go with it, or the Core 5th, is they have like a magnetic stirring base, um, so you can get really serious about your dosing. Uh, so yeah, Pacific Sun's KH lab is gonna be a really interesting thing to see. It's really cool to see uh, all these alkalinity controllers hit the market at the same time because there's a lot of companies that are going different directions um, and I think we'll have to do a completely separate video for uh, discussing all the different alkalinity monitors. Okay, Whew. catch my breath, check out the comments. Yeah, those, those Rossmont pumps have a low sticker price but they are built like uh, brick outhouses as we would say um, really tough you're not paying you know that price and getting like a cheap uh, you know Asian made device that's gonna break on you those moss moth pumps are legit um, fishy snowman asks what I think about the stacks rocks first impression this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard and I'm standing right next to Julian Sprung I was totally close-minded and then over a few shows I got to play with them and I got to stack them up, and you know, for a nano tank, you can't, you can never find the perfect rock for a nano tank. Those tax rocks are really, you know, uh, intended and designed for the smaller to medium sized tanks, um, especially the nano tank. And for a nano tank, you can never find that perfect rock. You can find a big rock, and you can chip away at it until you could kind of get a shape that you want. Um, the Marco rock, first of all, that's what they're using for the material. And I gotta say, I played with them a little bit and then I was hooked. I don't know why, I was totally closed-minded when I first saw the Stax Rocks, but then it, it allows you to be very creative. It allows you to build something really stable. And since they're flat, I feel like you'll be able to shift around the aquascape in your nano tank uh, pretty easily because all the surfaces are flat. So putting corals, moving this around, uh, sticking an extra slab of Stax in the middle of your rock work to get a higher your light or whatever, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, so the Stax Rocks, I'm totally sold. I think they're awesome. Um, it's it's hard, it's weird to consider it a product because uh, you know what they did is they took Marco Rock and they sliced it up. Uh, and yeah, so very cool. Um, I have been to the UK several times and I'll probably make it there again. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out. I don't know when, um, but yeah, so that's the stacks. They're really good. Let's right, see, which product should we talk about next? Let's go ahead and finish up the water pumps with the Maxspec Turbine Duo. This is such a cool pump. So if you haven't seen the Turbine Duo, um, definitely check out the link to the story on Reef Builders. Um, we definitely have exclusive on sharing this story. What's really neat is basically there's a centrally mounted motor 
and it's actually pretty compressed, so it's really small. But just like the gyro pump, you have a motor in the middle, and you have these weather vanes on the side of these turbines that move the water uh, in parallel, basically. But that they learned something about making a centrally mounted motor, and instead of putting these their turbine blades on it to create water flow, uh, they put volutes on both sides of this motor. Um, so basically, you have two inlets and two outlets. Um, if you're a classic person who has just one return pump, uh, you know, that might not appeal to you, but I think it's super cool. I want to say it's coming under $300, and unless you live in like Southern California or Florida, um, using a chiller is not like, it's not like a prerequisite to getting a saltwater aquarium or a reef tank. But in Australia, uh, in Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, those places get hot, man. And so a lot of these tanks, they have to drop a G just to get a chiller and they need something to power it. So for a lot of tanks that live in, that are placed in tropical climates that are absolutely going to need two flow lines, um, the turbine duo is a no brainer. It's under 300 bucks, um, it's controllable. Obviously you're controlling the motor speed, not the individual volume. So whatever you do to the motor speed is gonna affect both volumes um, but this is really really cool because it's going to save space it's going to save money it's uh, low power so yeah it's gonna be a really good pump um, the only slight trade-off that I think max spec had to do with the turbine duo is it's not exactly high pressure if you need high pressure you really should be going for something like uh, a little giant no, sorry not a little giant what am I talking about what is this 1998 uh, not a little giant like a blue line pump uh, we're saying a uh, reef what the hell is that name of that company I don't know the big external AC pump you need pressure you need a big external AC pump that's gonna do the job uh, so yeah the turbine duo I think it's really cool for my applications I still don't need a chiller but what I you know imagine in my mind when I set up a reef tank using a duo is in the past I've always used two primary pumps. One pump to feed the tank, one pump to feed the manifold that goes to your recirculating protein skimmer, that goes to one or two uh, media reactors, a chiller, and maybe like a dosing line. And uh, the old school way would be to have one big old pump and have a tee off, but anytime you change the valves, obviously you're changing the flow to everything. Um, the, the contemporary way is to have two pumps, one towards your manifold, one to your return, but now uh, you'll be able to use one single pump to feed, a, you know, uh, feed your tank and then feed a chiller, or feed your tank and feed the manifold. And this is gonna reduce complexity, and uh, I think it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be really good value. Um, and it's surprising that, uh, it, that it's finally coming out, something like this. So, uh, return will be too fast. Yeah, so, the thing about this is you'll be able to throttle the flow to your chiller, right? Um, you, you know, so you say you have a set high flow speed to your tank, that line going to your chiller, you'll be able to turn it down with the valve. Kind of negates the point of having control pump to some degree. Um, but, you know, be open-minded about the turbine duo. It's going to be a good deal. It comes with a million fittings. Um, for those of you that are thinking, hey, I want this return pump, uh, but I don't want an accessory line, um, they actually have some really cool fittings, like some really smooth Ys that will combine both outlets and take it all the way up to the tank. So if you just want, like, a classic return pump, that's going to be cool. Just like Rossmont and Ecotech Marine, uh, Max Spect is filling out their aquarium product ecosystem. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yes, reflow. That's the one I was thinking about for the return. Um, do, 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 Thanks everybody for tuning in. I think I still have one, two, three products to talk about. Uh, no, four products to talk about. But now I'm gonna catch my breath. Whew. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. I'm really looking forward to Macna. This is kind of one of the last. Uh, I don't know, reef builders tasks I do before I, um, then I go for my bike ride, I gotta get some exercise in, then I'm gonna pack all my stuff. It's like clothes in one bag, all the camera stuff in the other bag. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments, in the chat, if you're gonna be at MACNA. Uh, definitely a big shout out to all of the uh, Reef Aquarium YouTubers. Uh, YouTube community is growing so fast for the Reef Aquarium world, and it's just really cool to be a part of it. 
and it's really cool to see uh, you know so many of you guys um, at oh man I Henry Johnson I would love to show you my Pokedex but I am using my phone for this but um, let's see what do I not have I do not have a Mr. Mime um, but otherwise I already have transferred away like 20 different legendaries and I got a really good one. The first Moltres I caught was 98% IV, and I maxed them up right away to about 30 uh, CP of 32.13. Go Team Valor, that was a little Pokemon Go talk for some of you closet Pokemon players. Now back to the Reef Aquarium products. Okay, so we've talked about all the pumps. The next alkalinity controller, and the one that really is looking pretty freaking swanky, is the KH Director from GHL. Um, this is one of the ones to get really excited about because GHL has been killing it on the controller front. Their Profilux um, is one of the most popular and reliable aquarium controllers uh, bar none. Um, especially in Europe, this has been a popular one. And the GHL doser, uh, this was the granddaddy of all dosers. If you look at an old Profilux, you look at a current g bow the g bow completely ripped off the construction and design of the original Profilux doser um, and strangely enough g bow is you know private labeling this for a lot of different companies so a lot of companies have dosing systems that look like ghl's original uh dosing system in the last couple of years ghl has updated and modernized uh their doser to be the doser 2 and so now this is a standalone box that um, has bluetooth uh, maybe it has wi-fi but um, similar to the kh lab the kh director um, is going to work in tandem either with the doser 2 and the uh, ghl profilux computer I want to say that the KH Director has its own um, has its own dosing pumps inside, and there's a line for the water sample, the reagent, um, and the wastewater. Once that's mixed up and tested, um, definitely have a lot of questions for the GHL uh, for GHL about the KH Director. Um, but it's a good looking box of all the boxes. That's the one that I don't know for <laughs> just looking at the outside. It speaks to me. Um, yeah, so. I, so I want to say it's got its own dosing pumps in the KH director and the reason it needs to work in conjunction with either the doser 2 or the Profilux controller is for access because it, it doesn't have like its own interface its own app so when you get when you tie it into a doser 2 the doser will actually dose the um, the buffer that you want for your tank and then that will report back to your smartphone here's my imaginary smartphone here's my smartphone cover so you can pretend that so yeah kx director i think is going to come in um, right now the kind of the uh, the breakout alkalinity controller is the kh guardian and that thing goes for like 12 or 1300 dollars and just look at the price aside, just looking at it, it just, I don't know how to mount it, but they have a $200 mounting solution. So when you see something like the KH Director or the KH Lab, which are both gonna come in sub $1,000 plus additional uh, dosing channels, those things are really gonna be a high value. So yeah, KH Director from GHL. Um, GHL, you know, they're not trying to do it all. They're not trying to make a return pump. They're not trying to make wave pumps. They're always been kind of focused on the control of your aquarium and they've got a really great philosophy when it, um, when it comes to what they do. Um, that being said, there's been nothing but praise for the KH Guardian um, that people have been using for about the last year. I think I have like four or five friends who have one everybody loves the KH Guardian. So the KH Lab and the KH Director, although they're gonna be coming um, quite a bit lower in price, they're gonna to have to live up to the flawless, so far, flawless uh, short reputation that, that the KH Guardian has garnered. Um, and then for those of you wondering about the Alcatronics, uh, Focustronic won't be at Macna, so this won't be a Macna product per se. It will be a good product this year, but uh, we're gonna have a very, uh, not so much crowded, but a, a lot of choices to select from when it comes to alkalinity control for our reef tanks. So shout out, big star, gold star, thumbs up for me to you 
for everybody who's uh, watched this all the way through, watched this all the way here, because we are into the weeds of uh, reef gear, reef tech. You really got to be a reef gearhead uh, to keep up with all of this shop talk. All right, so what else have we not discussed? Breath, water, breath, water. Do, do, do. My favorite acro is a healthy acro. I almost don't care what kind of acro. You know, it, it, it's like my favorite fish. It's any species, any animal in the prime of health is just glows. It's got that glow. Um, so any acro that's just in super, super duper health um, is awesome. If I had to pick one off the cuff, you know, Hoaxamai is really high up there because it's a coral, it's a staghorn, it's always super blue. Um, what else? Uh, Suharsanoi, it's just got those super cool elongated tips. Very, very nice. Uh, yeah, love me some acros. There's a lot of cool ones. Um, but yeah, I just, I just love that super healthy acros. No, I haven't got to the clear roller filter, but that's one I'm very excited about and that's absolutely on our list. What? Okay, so the, the 10th product that I've selected, this is totally subjective, the one I've selected for um, you know, this top 10 you know, uh, products to look out for Macna is a really funky one. Uh, so ProClear Aquatic Systems makes the most generic products for reef aquariums. They're probably your uncle's first sump that he got at Petco. They make the sumps for Central, I believe, but it's actually pretty good stuff. And so in the last couple years, ProClear has been in business like longer than I've been in the hobby. I want to say at least a couple decades. They make tanks, they make sumps, just about anything you can make out of acrylic. So over the last couple years, they've really uh, put their thinking hats on and they've been developing products more for like commercial spaces, uh, the grab and, grow, grab and go system of displaying small nano fish. Um, some, some really cool all-in-one nano tanks that are surprisingly different. They have this one that's like this big, it's like $50. It has a wet dry in it for, and it's just like a drawer in the bottom to access the wet dry functions really quick. So they have this really weird, wild design where their diffuser plate has a bunch of mini impellers or, uh, in a row. I'm gonna say it's like six of them. Let me see, let me bring them up. I got the posts up here somewhere so I can describe it more better. Just look at, listen, if this thing had been made by anybody but ProClear, I would have probably laughed them out of the room. But in the last few years, ProClear has definitely like built up my faith in what they're able to, to do. These moving impellers are a moving part. It's gonna be very strange. Um, I guess the idea is that you have this, this diffuser plate and then you have these wheels, these, these uh, impellers around the sides that are passively rotated by the rise of the bubbles and uh, it creates some kind of fluid dynamic effect that changes the turbulence. I don't know if it increases it. I don't know if it gives it a turnaround. Um, like I said, on paper, this thing looks stupid. It looks useless, but it's pro clear and they've been doing some really neat stuff. There's no telling how this is going to perform uh, long term, um, but I'm excited to see it. I want to see it for myself. I want to see it in action. So Nick, if you're watching this, you better have one of those skimmers running because I've already seen plenty of pictures of it dry. Uh, yeah, so well, I don't remember what they call this thing. What do they call this thing? Just, yeah, just a weird uh, multi-impeller diffuser plate protein skimmer. It's gonna have, you know, whatever random pump, good pipeless designs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sure, it's gonna be great build quality. I just wanna see if those impellers really do anything to the bubble diffuser plate. So that's a weird one to look out for. Uh, it's uh, That one's a wild card. I don't know what it's gonna do. <sighs> Thank you again. I can't say it enough to everybody that's tuning in. Uh, thanks uh, everybody for uh, sharing the, the live stream, sharing, giving a thumbs up. It helps uh, spread the word about this live stream. Whew, man, gift of God right here. Holy crap, I think we only have two more. All right, back to Illu Magic. Um, Anybody that knows me knows that I'm not going to waste anybody's time talking about some janky products that are at least somewhat better, have the potential to be somewhat better than what's already available. 
Now, when I go to the international show, Interzoo, I can walk the Asian pavilion and see Chinese products all over the place. But there's something about Taiwanese products that when I look at them, the build and some of the funky features, I'm like, are you guys in, made in Taiwan by chance? So Taiwanese products are in a league of their own from Chinese products. Chinese products have gotten a lot better, but I think the Chinese emphasis is on making cheap lights, whereas Taiwanese products, um, they, they, have, they have some different criteria and they will definitely throw out some features that they're not good at communicating to us. Um, but having spent some time with some of their lights, uh, I am a fan, I really am. So the light to look out for from Illuji Magic is the Illumagic style. Now if you've seen the video, you kind of know just about everything about the lights. What's really cool is I use the Blaze Nano on my Nano Tank upstairs, which I featured I think about a week ago. The style uses the exact same pucks, but they're, they're, they're kind of small. I actually have some right here. So these are the replaceable pucks, and um, they are not afraid to put out a new color uh, on a dime and share them with new users to tailor these for commercial applications. There's freshwater versions. But what's really neat is basically my nano tank is just two of these, right? And they have their own uh, kind of a lens. So this is what my nano light looks like. Um, and their other fixtures uh, basically have these in a row. So you get like this uh, cluster strip light that's multi-channel, multi-color, and it looks really great. I was actually kind of shocked the first time I saw one on a baller reef tank at Majestic Aquariums. The lights were at full intensity and the corals looked really, really good. What's neat about the style, but really you guys, I'm not kidding, is there's six clusters in the style. So they're actually arranged in like six spaces. So you have overlap from side to side and from like front to back. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa. And you can control all the colors, which you should be able to do, you know, in any decent light. But in the style, you can control each individual puck. So you get more overlap from front to back, you get more overlap from side to side, and you can tweak the color for these different zones and intensities. So this is really like, if you had, if the loopy led the one LED had a, a child with a Radeon's clusters, basically the style is what you would get. Um, we don't know anything about US pricing um, because they've, they've attempted in the past to penetrate the US market, but it's been like four or five years since they even tried. So uh, Anthony from Dalu Australia is gonna be repping Illumagic Taiwan. He's gonna have the style on show. Um, and yeah, basically the max spec and the recurve are going to be um, some neat lights to look out for. If you just saw the box, you'd think, oh, whatever, this is some cheap Chinese LED looking thing. But I've seen them at tanks, over tanks, over live corals. They look great. Uh, Cans Marine uses only uh, Illumagic stuff um, over their corals. And so if you know anything about Cans Marines and the, 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 the corals that they uh, ship out, um, you, you know, you would want to know what lights are using. Don't know what the pricing is going to be, but this is going to be a very interesting fixture. Man, I can't believe how long we've been talking. Almost an hour. I was hoping this would be about an hour discussion. Um, and last, but certainly not least, the Coral View Clear uh, Aquarium Filter Roll Filter. So one thing that's really interesting is I am the filter rolls number one cheerleader. Uh, I went to Interzoo for the first time, I want to say in 2010, and there was a company there called Genesis, and they were making a 4,000 euro device. And basically the way it worked was like a water wheel. As the water came in uh, and filled this water wheel, it turned uh, the filter roll uh, by simple gravity. What could go wrong? It was expertly engineered. They had some titanium fittings for use in saltwater tanks. I'm sure no one did that. Um, and then I think two years later, D&D &D came, came up working with uh, Genesis with uh, what they call a flat pack version, like an Ikea uh, filter roll. And uh, that was like a thousand euros. But it, the problem with that one is it was still using the same concept of using gravity to turn the wheel when it starts clogging up. What could possibly go wrong in a saltwater environment with salt creep and etc. etc. Um, 
Let's see. So then the following interzoo, uh, a company called Feeling, which was an offshoot of Aquamedic. I think it was a previous founder of Aquamedic, a previous owner. He released the roller mat. It's just called the roller mat. Uh, this one was $400. And what's really different about this one is finally it used a float switch and a motor to turn the spool of the filter paper as it clogged up. Um, so Bulk Reef Supply has been promoting these uh, for a while now, but you, you really have to have like a perfectly designed sump to use something like the roller mat. You know, it's not, it's not something that's easy to just pop into an existing setup. Uh, so that's one of the challenges with the roller mat. You gotta be kind of committed and maybe uh, kind of plan out your system from the start to be able to use it. So this is where the clear filter is really going to shake things up. This is gonna be almost certainly everybody's first uh, filter roll filter. Uh, so what's cool about the roller mat is it's, uh, it's not one size. So it's adjustable from side to side and from top to bottom in order to get it to fit onto existing sumps. Um, I don't think there's gonna be an external version of this. It's gonna have to go in sump. This is brand new, I could be wrong. Coral View has only put out like a short video about it. But it's gonna have a high water sensor, a low water level sensor, um, and it uses a motor to turn the spool. Now these filter rolls are freaking awesome because you can imagine a scenario where a filter roll like this is literally filtering everything out of the water, everything at the macro and micro level, but nothing that's dissolved in the water. Um, so it's not going to take out dissolved organic matter like a protein skimmer, but it's going to take out a lot of stuff before it ever has the chance to break down into organic matter. And um, yeah, the fact that this thing is going to be fully adjustable for in two XY dimensions for sumps, and I think the price is going to be $250. You know, that's when it, in reef terms, $250 is like, it's almost like an impulse purchase. So Jack Behar says there will be an external box accessory. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense to have an external box uh, designed for the clear that then you can tie up to your sump. So yeah, there's still a lot of us, a lot of things for us to figure out, to learn, um, to dig up at MACNA in New Orleans this weekend. So um, thank you so much to everybody that's tuned in. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be killing it on reefbuilders.com with the posts and the stories. I'm gonna be killing it here for MACNA um, with up to the minute videos and information. My plan is when the show is over to go to my hotel room and just crank and just upload. Um, I'm sure one night or two I'll be pulled away to you know, go mingle at some of the activities of MACNA, but I'm um, really gonna double down and bring you guys the news as fast as possible. That way you guys have it and then we can discuss it after MACNA. So what do you think? Do you wanna see a live stream at MACNA? Do you want to see a live stream after Macna discussing? I would love to revisit all these products right after Macna, and I've got the scoop on all of them. Um, I have actually been to Bourbon Street before when I was a kid. I got obviously, of course, I went to the Cafe du Monde and had myself some beignets with some uh, Cafe au chocolat. When I was a little kid, I wasn't drinking coffee. Um, so yeah, definitely we'll be hitting up Bourbon Street. I don't think uh, it's best possible to even miss. Uh, Bourbon Street and no I will drink plenty of water and not get my drink on because I could do that at home but at MACNA it's showtime so thanks to everybody for uh, tuning into the live stream for everybody that shared everybody that liked your thumbs up your support you know just the comments I feed off of that you know uh, I know this stuff so what I'm telling you guys I'm doing it for you guys um, and it's, just, it's really fun to kind of reinvent myself as a blogger into a vlogger. It's a challenge to do the videos. I'm still making little mistakes and you'll have to uh, forgive me for that. But you know, I didn't uh, jump onto YouTube as like a perfect YouTuber, vlogger, uh, etc. So I am going to finish this live stream, get some packing done. Thanks to everybody that tuned in and uh, keep it locked and I will see you guys sooner than I probably realized. So thanks for tuning in everybody and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.